All right, hey guys, this is Mark coming to you from Thor. Uh, today, we're gonna show you the newer interface for our RF to IP gateway. Uh, so if you wanna take a look at it from our main page, just scroll down to decoders, RF IRDs, and we're gonna be taking a look at this model right here, the 16 channel to ATSC. Uh, it's been slightly redesigned. Now you can see that it has uh, an NMS port for your management system, two gigabit ports for output on IP, and there's also the ASI ports on the front. So you can input and multiplex ASI inputs to IP output. Okay, and these are daisy chainable. You will get short little RF jumpers. So if I put an antenna in the RF input one, the little jumper is going to go from the bottom row to the top one, and you can do this across the board, or you can use a, a little one by four splitter and do it every four channels so you don't lose that much RF power on the inputs. And again, this is a slightly newer uh, interface that we're showing you today. Uh, if you wanna read more about the product, you can take a look right here. This is the basic setup of it. Um, and we're gonna be showing you exactly what it can do. And again, new uh, PDFs down here if you guys are interested in taking a look. So this product, <clears throat> simply 192.168.0.136 to get into. Uh, and again, it's a fairly much simpler layout. You can go to tuner input, and you can see here that we can choose up to 16 independent channels. So they don't have to be adjacent at all. You can go to each one. Uh, so we're gonna click here and you're gonna see that it's already pre-programmed to 750, which doesn't mean a whole lot. So I'm going to show you guys an easy way to go about this. Uh, what you're going to do is pull up a table for wherever you live, and you should be able to find these pretty easily. There was a website called nocable.org I used to use for a long time. Uh, that one is no longer available on the Internet. I think it's now an app. So you could try that on your Apple phone or wherever you get apps. Uh, but I did find this. It's called rabbitears.info. And you can see here in the Los Angeles market all the channels that are pending available uh depending on where you live you know things like 29 palms that's really far from where i am so i'm not going to be able to pull that up so i'm going to choose a major channel here toward the lower end of the spectrum uh we're going to go with like an nbc here uh which i know should show up so of course it's going to show you the display channel on your tv is going to show up as 4-1 but in reality actual uh you know tv stations will send it to you in a different part of the spectrum. And that's the digital channel. So here we're gonna be looking at channel 36. And to find channel 36, we're gonna pull up an ATSC chart. And you're gonna to go to channel 36. And you're gonna see that's frequency 605. Okay, so we're gonna go back to our unit. We're gonna put in 605. Set. And immediately it picks up the signal. You can see here now I have a green light. 19 megs is about right. 19.3 is about ATSC. Uh, and to show you the rest of the unit now, here are the ASI inputs, which I don't have connected. TS config, your option for BIS if you want that. And then the more important section, the XPTS. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do a quick setup on this. So essentially from this tuner input, and I just hooked up a very basic, uh, just antenna, very, very basic. There's no power, uh, very cheap off Amazon, a very simple device, but you see it's already picking up a signal. So it's good enough to demonstrate here for you guys. So we're going to parse first and we're going to see uh, what it picks up because again you're looking for a locked signal and you can see here it picked up five programs on that one stream coming in at 19 point almost 19.3 okay so if you click here you're going to see these are all the channels that just appeared okay so i moved them over and so we have all these channels now available to us that are gonna be shooting out an SPTS format. 
And if you click there, right on the number, you can see how it's showing up in the unit. Okay, so you can switch from UDP to RTP, RTSP, your PIDs, program number. And these are the two ports I showed you on the front, the RJ45 port. So you can actually stream different channels to different ports or different addresses. Uh, you can see this is again going to be the same exact channel, but it's going to be going out on two different ports. And again, you can use that however you like. You can send it to different networks. Uh, there's a bunch of different stuff you can do with that with your imagination. Uh, but I just wanted to show you guys. So this is going to be port 3000. And going back here, I'll sh just choose another one for you guys. This is going to be oxygen is at 312 and 314 program number 42 okay and you can take a look at all these take a look at all the settings see all the service numbers i'm just going to refresh the output to make sure it's coming up all right so that's pretty much it that's we made it really really simple for you guys to use just to move it back and forth. If I wanna remove all these, I can highlight them and just hit the arrow going this way, refresh, and then parse. Very simple to set up, okay? So again, we still have our good frequency here. It's picking up exactly what it should be. So all you have to do is put in your frequency and go to select your IP. And I'm gonna show you guys how this is essentially gonna look using VLC player. So you can go in here, open your network stream, and I'm gonna to go to 3000. Now I only have one RJ45 port um, connected to my computer. So I'm gonna pull the RJ45 port out of the NMS and I'm gonna plug it into GE1, which is our first ethernet. And now you can hit play. Again, port 3000. Sure, I didn't do it. I had and it immediately pops right show up. Them the Louvre, for example. But now now you're being all okay, snow. and that's live television. You just created to IP. And again, there was another program on that frequency. That was 3012. So we're going to go here and hit play on that and see what's on the other port. And you can see here it's Oxygen, True Prime. And you can see the quality is a little bit worse because in the 19 megabit spectrum or pipe, right, you're going to have primarily one HD channel and a major metropolis, and then you're probably going to have two, three, four SD channels that are coming in a much lower bandwidth than the HD channel. So you can see that this is probably 720 at best, uh, maybe even worse. Maybe it's just SD, maybe it's 480. But if I go back, to the primary channel, which was 3000, you're going to see that this is going to come in very clear in HD. And it's a much nicer picture. And that's just how the TV stations output their channels and they multiplex various programs on a single ARC carrier. All right? It's that easy to set up. Uh, there's not a whole lot more. And you can see here now that this is spinning because, again, I took my RJ45 cable and I pulled it out of the NMS port. So I'm going to pull it out from the GE1, put it back in the NMS, right? And we're going to go back to tuner input. Immediately goes back to functioning how this should work. And again, the rest of the system is very straightforward. Your network, your password, save, restore, back upload, firmware. That's it. And you can always see how long this product has been running in your system. And again, you can relay this on any IP address in your network. And that's it. That's all I wanted to show you guys. Just a single channel converted to an SPTS. That's how quickly and efficiently you can program your system to convert from RF to IP.